Section 3 on Hegemony Section 3A Imperialism's Cause Section 3A1 Inner Bipolar Dualism Ultimately, the philosophy idealizing imperialism is a condition of simultaneous duality resulting in bilocation of one's focus between opposite conflicting concepts. The bicamerality of the cerebrum allows such dualism to be mimicked in the psyche as cognitive dissonance over concepts such as good and evil. When a mind begins to think in terms of absolutes, of extreme opposites, it will divide its own potential for expansion against itself in a manner that will shrink its capacity. This method of calisthenic friction is what causes the effect of consciousness to exist initially, the spark that fuels the flame of ego. However, when dwelt in too long, rather than grown beyond, such a bipolar mindset will eventually oscillate between manic or depressed emotions, inspired or distracted cognitions, creative or destructive activities, and sadistic or masochistic impulses. When dwelt upon, the apparently paradoxical simultaneous existence of opposite conditions in nature, such as light and dark, hot and cold, day and night, black and white, etc., will prolong the psychic symptoms of bipolarity, being the self-imposed disease of an introverted ego. Outside of such a bipolar type of mind, the idea of an empire would never have come up, and mankind would yet, even now, remain in the more psychically awake, less technologically developed condition we dwelt in prior to our discovery of and first attempts at what we now call civilization. During the early Paleolithic, when different tribes began to be forced to share space in the same caves due to the lengthening of winters at the beginning of the most recent North Hemisphere Ice Age, this bipolar mind state in our species' first potential hegemons originally arose. The idea of how to convince other tribes to share space comfortably led to the inevitable conclusion of formulating and enforcing a plan to influence them toward doing so. This idea, taken to its ultimate conclusion, is an empire, and the person who embraces such would be its hegemon. The mind of one who would be a hegemon of their own empire is, by its own definition, locked by itself into a dual-cell prison. The mental condition of bipolar extremism that exploits as resources the dualisms in nature and which arises from the split nature of the twin halves of our own species' brains. Thus, all empire symbolizes the redoubling of this initial dualism. That is why empire hinges on even numbers, while a true democracy where government is decentralized into a pluralism, legality is unenforced or non-authoritarian, and all individuals' freedom is maximized. Depends on having a government based on odd numbers. Any even number may be split evenly into two equal parts. Any odd number cannot. To expand exponentially, that is, gradually yet perpetually, rather than asymptotically, an empire's government must be balanced in exact equity, in accord with the bipolarity of the mind of the hegemon. The most stable and longest-lasting empires expand exponentially. Section 3A2 Outer Exponential Dialectics to study this effect of exponential expansion by perpetual doubling, we begin by examining the rule of four that arises between the foundation level, inner bipolarity, and the next iteration of greater sum, outer dualities. Because bipolarity is a condition of cognitive consciousness, and a hegemon 
is a sociological archetype. We cannot say the two are entirely one and the same. There are those who are both, as well as those who are neither, as well as those who are only one or the other. Hence the Law of Four arises, presented as the four-part yin-yang, or black and white six over nine logo, where each opposed side contains its opposite within its own core also. To study the impact of perpetually doubling the original idea of a bipolar hegemon into an actual empire, we thus return to this technique of seeing good opposite evil, yet each containing the other as well, such that within good there is evil, and such that within evil there is good. By fracturing each half of the mirrored reflections, a hologrammatical cellular division occurs alike meiosis. When a single cell divides first into two, then next into four, and continues dividing itself within by multiplying the numbers of its constituent components, thus to eight, then sixteen, etc., by perpetually doubling. This mimetic meiosis results, at first, in the rule of four. To study the social impact of an empire itself being expanded by such a method, we must then return again to applying to sociology this rule of four, where there is good within evil and evil within good, as well as only both good and evil alone where there are those who are both or neither, as well as only one or the other, and where any group, if opposed to another, will eventually be infiltrated and subverted from within to merge its motives towards those of the opposed group, until eventually dialectical synthesis between both is achieved. Dialectical synthesis, usually modeled as a triangle, with angles labeled thesis, antithesis, and synthesis, if expanded into a tetrahedron by including the operant observer's objective point of view on the process, is the same as the rule of four. The only added component would be to expand the triangle into a tetrahedron by extending its midpoint into the extra-temporal dimension of individual perspective over history. Then, in addition to a good thesis, an evil antithesis, and a synthesis, both, there would also be the option for the otherwise absent point of view of neutral, neither. 